All right, hello. So in chapter seven, our focus is on the theory of phase equilibria and pure component systems, more specifically, the theory of vapor liquid coexistence in pure component systems. And so what I wanna do in this screencast is show how we could take our criteria of chemical equilibria, our uh, equality of uh, molar Gibbs free energy of the two phases, how we could take that and we can replace it with uh, an equality of fugacities, and for the case of pure component systems, uh, equality of fugacity coefficients of the two phases. I emphasize that you know we're looking at pure component systems because in general, we would just get to the isofugacity criteria. Okay, so if I'm talking about phase equilibria, okay, so my criteria of phase equilibria is one, thermal equilibrium, right? Thermal equilibrium just means that the temperature of the two phases are equal. Right? If the temperature of the two phases weren't equal, I'd have a net exchange of heat between the two phases until uh, the temperatures were equal. Right? I'd have a temperature gradient, Fourier's law. Uh, I'd get a transfer of heat until the, temperatures, um, the temperature gradient went away. Okay? Mechanical equilibrium tells me that the pressure of the two phases are equal. If the two pressures were not equal, I'd have a net exchange of PV boundary work uh, until the pressures were equilibrated. Okay, or the pressures um, became equal. And for the case of a pure component system, my chemical equilibria criteria reduces to an equality of the molar Gibbs free energy of the two phases, right? The molar Gibbs free energy of the two phases are equal. You could say that the chemical potential of the two phases are equal, or ultimately when we get to mixtures, it'll be the chemical potential of each component uh, in each phase uh, is equal, okay? So I have an equality of temperatures, equality of pressures, and equality of molar Gibbs free energies. Okay, so molar Gibbs free energy is great. Okay, but now we've introduced fugacity, right? And so fugacity has, um, you know, lots of desirable properties over G. Um, and so what we want to look at here is how do we get F in our phase equilibrium criteria instead of G? Okay, and actually it's it's quite simple. Okay, so you know if I take my isomolar Gibbs free energy criteria, I know that my two phases are at the same temperature and pressure. Okay, so if I you know, fully write this out, I'd have that the Gibbs free energy, molar Gibbs free energy of phase one at T and P is equal to the molar Gibbs free energy of phase two at the same temperature and pressure. Okay, or I could equivalently write this as G1 right, at T and P minus G2 phase or T and P right is equal to zero okay we're here you know one and two is just you know indicating some arbitrary phase one and two in, in coexistence um, it could be a vapor liquid coexistence right one could be say vapor two could be liquid um, or vice versa uh, it doesn't matter okay so whenever I have the difference in molar Gibbs free energies at the same temperature right essentially an isothermal process the bell that dings in my head is fugacity, right? Our definition of fugacity, okay? So our definition of fugacity is for an isothermal process, the difference in our abstract quantity molar Gibbs free energy is equal to RT log ratio of fugacities. So this, okay, would be equivalent to RT log fugacity of phase one at T and P relative to phase two at, whoop, phase two at T and P. Okay, cool. So if I work with this expression, okay, I can divide through by RT, right? And I would get that log F1, okay, over F2 is equal to zero. Okay, if I were to take the exponential of this, then I have the F1 over F2 is equal to one. Or finally, that the fugacity of phase one at T and P is equivalent to the fugacity of phase two at T and P, okay? So we just showed that our equality of chemical potential or equality of molar Gibbs free energy criteria could be replaced with uh, an equality of fugacities. Cool. And if we were to go further, okay, for the pure component system case, okay, so for mixtures, right, I'd stop at isofugacity. But for the case of pure component systems, right, we can go a little further, and then I could take my fugacity, and I could expand it as fugacity coefficient times P is equal to fugacity coefficient times P. But what would happen is if we were dealing with mixtures, 
we'd have mole fraction of phase one and mole fraction of phase two here. Okay, so you could still do it, um, but you'd, you'd get mole fractions in there. Okay, but in this pure component state um, case, right, mole fraction in theory would be one in both cases. Okay, I can cancel my pressure dependence, and I find that the fugacity coefficient in phase one at T and P must be equal to the fugacity coefficient in phase two at T and P. Okay, and why is this useful? Well, we showed that uh, fugacity coefficients related to um, my residual Gibbs free energy, right? Namely that, um, well, depending on how you want to write it, GR is equal to RT log phi, okay? And GR is going to be equal to HR minus TSR, okay? And so why that's useful is we've shown already now that we can use our cubic equations of state to readily calculate HR and SR and hence GR. So if I've taken my phase equilibrium criteria now and reduced it to an equality of fugacity coefficients, right, which I can relate directly to GR, now I know I can use a cubic equation of state to calculate GR. So uh, if, for example, um, I want to know the saturation pressure of you know, my fluid um, at a given temperature, well, this gives me a route now where I can specify temperature, I can essentially guess a value of pressure, and I can keep iterating on P until, right, well, so I iterate on P, so when I speed T and P along with TC, PC, and omega um, into my equation of state calculator, right, out comes GR, and so I can keep iterating on P until GR or phi of phase one and phase two are equal. All right, so now I have a means in which I can directly calculate uh, phase coexistence using a cubic equation of state. Cool.